Richard Holmes, the fine romantics biographer of Shelley and Coleridge, speaks of biography as a, both a pilgrimage and a haunting, an act of deliberate psychological trespass, an invasion of the present upon the past and the past upon the present, and a continuous living dialogue between biographer and subject. I know what he means. For the time I spent living and breathing John Fonte amounted to a kind of haunting. I haunted him and he haunted me, never more so than when in the middle of my research, Joyce Fonte, his widow, fell ill. From the time of John's death in 1983, Joyce had stayed on in the sprawling ranch house on Point Dooms, Cliffside Drive. This house was both a curiosity and a sight. Shaped like a giant Y with two multi-roomed wings flying away from each other into the walled and overgrown estate, Rancho Fonte was filled with every vestige of John Fonte's life, lovingly saved by Joyce through nearly 50 years of marriage and fiercely guarded in her widowhood. But now, in the late 90s, Joyce was ill and had to be hospitalized. An extended stay in a Santa Monica convalescent home would follow. I should say that in the year or so after winning her permission to do the biography, I'd been driving out to visit her as often as I could, sharing endless cups of coffee and tape recording our talks. So that when, before leaving for the hospital, she pressed a key to the front door of the house into my hand and said I was free to continue my researches, I knew what I had to do. For the next several weeks, I spent virtually every day at that house. I rented a big, fast Xerox machine, had it delivered, and went to work copying every page of manuscript, every screenplay, every letter, and every other sh shred of evidence that was crammed into those four black file cabinets on the service porch. And then I began to arrange thousands and thousands of pages on the smooth green felt of the pool table in the family library, trying to conjure up the outlines of a life. Did I say it was a wet winter? often storming with a row of pines outside the window swaying dark in the ocean wind, or that a plague of crows had once infested those trees, driving John to distraction. Joyce told me how she had hired a sharpshooter veteran of the Vietnam War to solve that problem. <laughs> now the crows were gone and the house was empty except for their echoes and a million reminders of the man whose life I was haunting and whose life was haunting mine. So I copied and arranged and conjured. Few better ways exist for understanding any writer than by knowing the books that he treasured. Cataloging Fonte's books, I learned not only the range of his interests, from literature and history to human anatomy, but also the depth of his absorptions. No mere coincidence that he had reserved a place of honor for the massive four-volume set of Butler's Lives of the Saints, or that he had saved the Jesuit prayer manual that had failed to govern him in high school. Joyce's books told a different story. While her general reading, too, was varied, it was more strictly literary, leaning to poetry, biography, and murder mysteries. Her deepest interest, however, was in the occult. Shelf after shelf groaned with treatises on Wicca, astrological almanacs, and handbooks of incantations and spells. Joyce had been, in fact, a practicing member of a coven, leading John's best friend, the skeptical Carrie McWilliams, to dub her the Witch of Malibu. Likewise, John put little stock in her trafficking in magic, but when one night, unbeknownst to him, she had recited the ceremonial invocation summoning Anubis, the Egyptian dog god of the dead, Fonte reported feeling a looming canine presence, as if the ghost of his beloved bull terrier Rocco had returned. And now there I was, day after day, alone in that drafty, rambling house, working often long past dark, haunting, that's the word. Maybe this is what led David Kippen to observe in the San Francisco Chronicle that my book was written, quote, with a degree of identification bordering on demonic possession. <laughs> David meant that in a nice way, I think. Yeah. And of course, the demon trope is apt, given all the saints and spirits and gods and monsters that animate the thing. But for now, there I was in that haunted, haunting house, sifting through reams of paper, searching for the narrative line of a life. I remembered how, in his preface to the Black Sparrow reprint of Fonte's great novel, Ask the Dust, Charles Bukowski had described discovering the novel in the downtown Los Angeles library as a moment when he felt like a man finding gold in the city dump. Fonte was my god, Bukowski wrote. 
now surrounded by Fonte's writings, holding the original pages that had passed through his hands, I felt as if I had stumbled into the lost gold mine itself, as I discovered nugget after nugget, unpublished manuscripts that for all I knew were being read now for the first time by me, and as if I weren't already haunted enough among these manuscripts, I found a ghost story, the case of the haunted writer. Thank you. Thank you.